Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Talking Shop. This is Pat Hazard coming here to give you a little update of what was going on for this particular episode. As you might recognize, it is kind of late and a lot of the things we discuss about in this episode are actually out already. So, the main purpose of this was to just give you a heads up, this was recorded back in August, so I hope you guys enjoy, and there's a lot more episodes to come. And, uh, like always, like, subscribe, and continuing following all the adventures. Alright, so let's start this off. Hello everybody and welcome to Talking Shop. What the heck is Talking Shop? It is the premiere podcast for the Hazard Channel, which is hosted by me, Patrick Simpson, and one of my special guests that I find either interesting or is a friend of mine. Today we're talking to the illustrious man who I got to meet at MAGFest last year, and he was, uh, I would say, I was his partner in the film that we got to film with Zenith. Definitely. And uh, we just sort of I struck up a friendship, but now apparently he's adopted me. So of course you're you're my you're my minion. You're the chip off the old block. You're you're the son of Godzilla. The son of Godzilla. Oh no, not the retarded baby. <laughs> really? Blowing your little smoke rings, you know. I tell you, Gramps, you just you get me every single time. This is why you're decade, you know. <laughs> yeah, big fat jerk. Right. So it's none other than the illustrious Matt Burkett, also known as a palsy hack in some other circles, and sometimes very rarely known as Whiskers. What is up, people? Yes. Hello. <laughs> How are you, sir? Uh, I'm not too bad, man. How about yourself? I'm I'm I'm, I'm okay. Uh, as we were discussing uh, for the pre-show before the podcast. Uh, we had, um, I had recently taken up a new job, so that's why I had disappeared for five months, and Matt has been very busy in his own life, so. Yeah, plenty of stuff has happened, but life is life. Life is life, and that is kind of what our discussions always end up being. <laughs> it's like, you know, uh, uh, it's, uh, my, uh. My family member uses a a, a, a phrase from um, the Christmas story. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's like... a there's a I forget it. It's I, I, the particular scene is where his son comes up and he's like, "Oh, I really wanted this for Christmas." It was right around the time, and the dad just kind of shrugs and goes, "Well, that's life." <laughs> <laughs> it's like. It's like such a harsh but like true statement sometimes. <laughs> and, and you just got to just shrug it off and laugh. But as with this podcast, we always get into some of the stuff and I've actually set up some uh questions. Not a lot of questions, but you know, some questions. Oh, don't worry. You know, one question from you is going to take like I'm going to give like a 45 minute answer and then the podcast will be over and I'll still be talking to you and you'll be like, "Matt, I got to go." Matt, yeah, yeah. I I, I just let me go, goddammit. Yeah. So, I feel the first uh, important question is, who are you and how do you know me? Why did I write that? Who am I and how do I know you? Um, well, I am Matt Burkett, uh, I guess, at least with the with this particular audience. Um, I'll probably be known best for the work that I used to do um that appeared on Channel Awesome and Reviewtopia and stuff as a Z hack. Technically, I still go by that name because that's still my Twitter handle. I haven't changed it up, but you should. Be, I will also mention that this this audience is very familiar with um, the Hazard Channel, so they will know you also from your other show. Okay, well, yeah. So, um, but yeah, Monstrosity is a vlog of Tokusatsu, which is just a. Uh, a uh, very fun uh, thing where we just talk about all the craziness of Japanese live-action special effect movies. You would know this as Godzilla, Gamera, Power Rangers, Kamen Rider, Ultraman, all that fun stuff. And, Mask uh, Rider? Mass Rider, yeah, Kamen Rider. Uh, Kaiju? Kaiju, yeah. Uh, I, uh, Pacific Rim? 
well, yeah, we we we, we did Pacific Rim, and that that was that was a very interesting. I got to see the I got to see that review. The did you? Yeah, very. It was very uh, very very um interesting to see the different takes on it. While also, I, I I saw it right before I went to see it myself. Actually, oh jeez. But luckily, it didn't really color my opinion of it too much, which Good. you could see from my response after. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for watching that video. Yeah, that that video got some interesting responses from people. There were people that were like, "Oh, I'm never gonna watch another video of you again." And there was a uh, had one guy on there accusing me that we all acted as if this was the worst day of our lives and. I think a lot of people were kind of upset by by Carlos ripping up the free poster that he got, and you know, I, I he mostly did that just to get a rise out of people, and it totally freaking worked. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I, I, had a, I had a good time making that video. Um, I didn't really care for the movie at all, but um, I really had a good time just watching it, and I'm glad you actually liked the movie. You know, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of fans out there that just dig that thing like none other i mean like I, I i was listening to all the hype of it believe me uh the film renegado hyped the shit out of it for months oh. ahead of then <laughs> oh yeah and, yeah, and i yeah jerry jerry hyped the shit out of it and I, you know like i was mildly uh i was mildly uh invested in it because it was one of my favorite directors and he you know, it's another cool concept where it's like, I just want, you know, where it's giant miter, giant monsters against giant fighting robots. Right. And, I mean, from my general opinion of Pacific Rim, it was, you know, it was just big, stupid fun for everyone. Well, and you see, that's, that's the problem, because it didn't need to be big, stupid fun. Um, something that I don't think anybody ever talks about is how you have this movie that spends 20 minutes setting up this this world, this fantasy world, right? All right. these rules. And then they systematically, for the next two hours, break every rule that they just set up. And by the end of the movie, anything can happen. You know, the whole linking of the mines and stuff with the, the Jaegers uh, makes no sense. It... it, it it's just ridiculous. They'll tell you, well, we can't put this girl as a pilot because, you know, uh, she, her parents died by a kaiju and she's going to go all revenge filled. But this guy who felt every emotion uh, of his brother as his brother was ripped out of the goddamn cockpit and killed by a kaiju. He's cool. Yeah, he's no. totally cool. Um, it, Not it was, to mention it's the American actor playing an Australian and the Australian oh, yeah. American. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it just the movie. There, there's a lot of Godzilla movies that are that are big and stupid and stuff, but you know even the worst Godzilla movies actually uh, follow a set of rules. Right. Th this did it just mostly just because. Hey, look, it's cool. You I know, mean, whatever. It's a movie. No, you know? it's it's a movie, and I mean to me, I looked at it. I looked at it as more of a basically a a a, a really well funded fan film. <laughs> I mean, but, but that's still like kind of like putting. Putting like a uh, not not to say you're excusing it, but that's kind of like filtering it, you know. It's like, well, you know, it's really stupid, it's really lame. But... No, I mean, I have it. I listen. I had a lot of issues with it. Believe right. me. Right. Okay. But I generally stating from what I've had to sit through for the past three summers and actually working in the right. movie theaters, that totally. like compared to any type of robot film that I come out recently from this thing that at least i could understand at least from a technical side the movie oh this the visual effects are amazing and this you know is loads better than real steel and uh transformers right. but at the same time i don't really know if those movies really set that high of a benchmark you know right. um and that's I, just my you opinion know. though yeah well, we can get off the topic of Pacific Rim. <laughs> <laughs> but but let's talk about how I met you, because that, that's an interesting story. Yes, that was that part is. of your first question. Um, yeah, so at at this last year's, uh, or this past January, uh, we all went to MAGFest, and uh, we uh, I was supposed to do this scene for uh, Zenith Will Rule, um, for his big project, and it involved uh, bringing out the suit that we had for a policy hack. I was playing a policy hack again, and um, nobody really knew how it was going to go down. We didn't know if we were going to have uh, Linkara and Juwario in on it. It, it was it was a, a big thing. But I was going to have my friend Richard uh, film it with his camera, which was a, a P3I, 
mm-hmm. and I ran into you, um, yes. and you introduced yourself. You're like, hey, my name's Patrick, and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yeah, yeah, you cameoed for me that one time. And and I swear, and I, I don't know if I told you this, but I blanked. I'm like, I did? <laughs> I had no recollection of this one. Believe whatsoever. me, it was an audio cameo. Like, it was, I think, episode either five or six of Hazard Rants. And this was when I was still interjecting story elements that were trying to grasp at some type of continuity. And you were playing, uh, as I called it, the Cloak of Rage. I, so, I remember this now. I yeah. do. I do. And you did uh, you did an audio cameo, which is, like, I didn't want a lot of video cameos because that's a oh. lot of converting stuff at the time. And I was still kind of learning things out and learning how people were filming things. And I was like, audio cameos are a lot easier to throw in. And, then I, can so. just an- and then I can just animate them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it, and that, that's a, a perfect way to, to get more cameos in there, too. Mm-hmm. Um, makes it a lot more versatile. But, yeah, so, like, I don't remember exactly what happened. I mean, you were doing some filming, and then all of a sudden we just kind of, like, clicked. I mean, the way I like to think about it is, like, two soldiers who had been in war and who had never met, but they're like, okay, I got your back. Now we're going to form a squad. And, you know, you and I just, just kind of, like, partnered up, and we shot all the stuff. I never, ever did anything with Zenith. It was all strictly with you. You were wrangling people. I was wrangling people. And we made that thing happen. And as I've said numerous times, I don't know if I've ever told you, but I've told many people this. If I hadn't run into you, I don't know what would have happened at that particular shoot, if that makes sense. Um, Because, you know, there was there's other situations that were going on at the time. And you were, you were like, Matt, keep your freaking cool, or I'm just going to, like, kick your ass because we do not have time to be dealing with this right now. And well, you were, I mean, like, were, you try- were you currently getting swept up in that shit? Or were you just kind of, like, uh, were you kind of trying to stay out of it as much as possible? Are you talking about the, the rest of the shoot or all the stuff surrounding the shoot? Well, I mean, because you were, ju- you were just saying how there was a lot of, I mean, like, I understand the wrangling thing, and I wasn't, you know, I, I mean, I'm well, not well connected in the community or i'm right, not i right. wasn't connected at the com- in the community that much no so, I'm, I'm just saying like there was in i don't you know i i don't mean any disrespect by by saying this but I, i'm just going to be completely honest um that particular shoot was really really just uh, nobody knew what was going on and the people who didn't know what was going on never communicated it to anybody else so mm, there was a time like the night before that uh, I think it was on. We shot it on Sunday, right? Uh, the fight scene or the a policy hack uh, reviewer fight scene. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was Sunday day into. Yeah, like... because I remember talking to you on Saturday night when I was hanging out with Doc Pepper and uh, Mark Muse, and right. we didn't even know if it was going to happen because um, I think we were trying to get a hold of Justin or something. We didn't know and. We didn't know if uh, Lewis was going to be able to do it. And well, remember that Lewis. Mess. What re- remember Lewis wasn't even really involved in that. Scene. No, he. Well, see, the thing was, he in my head he was, you know, and I and right. I knew that, and I had never talked to him about it because it just never came up. But I'm really glad that you know how it turned out because after all that chaos and stuff, it turned out well. But I guess like uh, just you know, Magfest in general. Most people already know this. Uh, I got problems with particular people in the community and even just like bumping into them. And, and it's, you're going to bump into these people no matter what. Mm-hmm. Um, it just makes for it's a like, big uh, convention center. It does not mean that you won't bump into oh, them. Oh, totally, totally. And it just makes for like awkward situations. And, uh, you know, I, 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 it's not like I'm afraid to see these people because I'm not. The thing is, though, I just don't want to take the time and energy to, like, whatever. It, you know, even to just, like, bypass them. You can still feel that that just negativity. Yeah, huh? you don't want to – you don't want the confrontation – you don't want to deal with the confrontation. Yeah, and the confrontations that we had there was, was just a fucking mess. A lot of these people just need to grow up. But anyways, <laughs> the beyond – I mean, getting back to, like, the topic – we like all that stuff happened and that shoot went down just like it was awesome it felt like you know being back on the set of like review of our saga because i could communicate with you you know what i was doing and we just needed this and we needed that and when 
you know, Justin wasn't ready for uh, his stuff because he wasn't in costume yet. You know, we were getting, we were like, oh, quick, what do we need to do? Oh, let's get B-roll of Linkara. So right, get, get that, B-roll and... of Linkara, let's get the cloaks in there, get their yeah. reaction shots. Yeah, so, I mean, really, I think that, you know, the ebb and flow and everything, we just kind of, we just merged and we we're just like, yeah, you know, I mean, and we I mean, partnered up and, and it, ever since then we've been friends. Yeah. And I, I'm going to be honest with you. I remember you showing me like the, the storyboards of it. Uh -huh. And I remember like sort of trying to retain them and going, this is still going to be very hard for me to remember. <laughs> Because you're very, like, apt at, like, technical-looking shots. And I'm like, I'm just going to try and give you the best <laughs> possible shots but that you I see, can. That, that's the thing, though, because you did. And I think that, uh, you know, Richard would have done fine. But I think because of the fact that, you know, you have – and I'm not putting down Richard or his abilities. But because of the fact that you have a background in this, it just made things easier. Mm. And it and it wasn't just you going, oh, look at me and my, my new toy, this really nice camera. I mean, you knew how to utilize it. You knew, you know, what you needed to do. One thing I wish stuff. I had, one thing I wish I had done, and this is something I, I, I wanted to do with Zenith as well, is like initially before the shoot, because initially I wasn't going to help him with the movie at all, actually. Really? Initially, I was supposed to have like a bit part in the movie because I was going to be working on a different, I'm putting quotation marks that you can't see, different movie at the at the uh, convention itself that fell through at the last minute, but I had a crap ton of, I just brought all of my production equipment with me. Nice. And I was just like, you know what, uh, Zenith is making the movie, he can utilize the, he can utilize anything that I have and I will do the best to help him with it. Totally. And uh, the one thing that I, uh, going back to what I was saying, is the one thing I wish I had done was had CineStyle on both the cameras. So they right. had both a flat profile instead of using, like, the color correction softer, software that was in the camera itself. Right. Because there were parts where we were shooting in the hallways of the convention center, and everything looks positively orange. Really, and you can't fix that, or you can try to fix it, but it's not. It's not gonna do anything. You're, you're gonna be lucky if you can, you know, just wash out that tint a little bit. Yeah, I mean, not positive. It, it looks sort of uh, not orange, golden rodish. That's okay. a better way to golden it. rodish. Golden rodish. So does, it does, it, does it speak the binary language of moisture evaporators too? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. No, nah, but uh, so yeah, and then like working on that shoot because I had never worked with J Justin before. I had never worked with Link Car before, or either at all. Lewis, honestly, I... right? That was like the I because I had known that you had been you know you you're fairly very fairly approachable about like what projects you had worked on in the past and what projects you wanted to work on. And you had, I remember you had been very honest about how you wanted to work with Justin and, and Lewis on a couple of projects a couple of times and never yeah. got the t and never got around to doing it. And I was yeah. like, then this scene, I'm going to try and facilitate it to be the best so that you can at least walk away saying you worked with these people. It, it was, I, I, when you sent me the footage, um, you know, I was looking through it. I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, there's a couple of things, and, and this isn't just because I think that we were in a rush to try to get everything together. There's a few things I'm like, okay, well, how can we edit better? But everything that, that was shot, and I'm not trying to blow smoke up your ass or just say, man, good job, and look how cool we are. I I was really pleased with what came out. And yeah, uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> seeing seeing the trio shot of Linkara, uh, Exceed, and uh, Tommy Kamen Rider all together. I mean, that, that right there is just like, cool. You know, yeah. like that's that was that was the that accomplishment was that that is exactly what I was trying to get the money shot the money shot and, and you know I was trying to film it sort of RPG style so that's why there was like those zoom in shots on each character <laughs> I, I worked that into the edit like I, I haven't worked on it in a little bit mm -hmm. but it's uh I think it's gonna turn out it's gonna turn out decent good um 
it, for what it is. I mean, it, it's not this, you know, majorly epic thing, but, you know, the music that's been chosen, um, big surprise, uh, Billy Draws 2 did the audio for it. Um, my buddy Billy and his band out in Buffalo, um, the song is uh, fairly I badass. Me, even when Cara is and uh, it just fits. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the whole thing. Did you ever hear... It's, it's not going off topic. I'm sorry if it is. No. Did you hear this rumor that everybody thought this yeah, was like it's their my project. project? We look like we um, know. We no, look I like it's everyone project, kind of but knew. But it's actually it. his project. I, I thought everyone kind of knew it was Dennis. Um, <laughs> and again, I'm not trying to turn the subject. I, on yeah, me, somebody you know, was telling me around, that but, you know, just, oh, that was yeah, one of the more um, strange things that I had heard. Your project and you're ripping off. Nah, I mean, what is it? A lot of people didn't. A lot of people approached me and said that I just looked. Professional, they they and they were like, "What do you? Are you like a professional camera crew that Zenith hired?" And I'm like, "No." Well, you always had your camera around your neck and you know your camera bag and your the. If I remember right, you had the I, tripod strapped across your back. Like, I mean, you were ready for war. You know what I mean? I like, you were, like... regret it. <laughs> <laughs> I regretted hulking all that crap around. No, the, I bet. I bet you were like the, freaking the, that was the one thing about weekend. yeah. Well, no, I've actually I came home and happily collapsed, and <laughs> and I was like because the other thing, you know, my girlfriend, um, who you got to meet so mm-hmm. multiple times, uh, she said it very very aptly. She said you this was definitely Pat. This was definitely your project as well because you got to work with the people that you've always wanted to work with. And you got to show them what you can do. And now they exactly. know who you are. And that's kind of true. Because I, I, I was I was really happy with, with how again how it turned out. You know, I think it was just a great melding of a lot of people working together and you know, you can't create that kind of flow. You know, um you can try to. Uh but Well at a convention, no, you can't create that flow. If it yeah. was like a if it was like a closed off set where there was a a set goal and yeah. like everyone was working on it. Yeah, possibly. But you know, at a convention, damn near try a uh, damn near impossible. Yeah. So good for us. Yeah. Look at us. Indie filmmakers. Some two thumbs way up. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was, uh, it was a good time. Um, uh, it was so much fun. And I, like, I, I'm bummed because I was like, ah, this is only a one time thing. It's never going to happen again. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's it, I. I know that you're going to Magfest next year, right? Uh, I have the the tickets and pass. Yeah, so I'm going next nice. year. That's like one of the only conventions that I actually go to, other right than that and NYCC. Right. Yeah, I I'm I'm not going. In fact, I think that's probably the last time uh, that I'm. Gonna, gonna ever out. don the the suit again? I mean, Ryan, the the guy who created it. I mean, you know Ryan, my best friend. Yeah. Uh, played Aries in the series. Um, you know, he's moved into Mexico. I mean, he was always kind of the caretaker of that thing. So whenever that thing was busted out, you know, he was here, you know, fixing it, making it look better, and stuff like that. And with him being so far away and stuff, it's just made things a lot harder. And yeah, that was the last time that that thing, you know, got lugged halfway across the nation from coast to coast, pretty much. Um. Has has it been lugged? Has the suit been lugged across the nation before? No, that was the first time. So that was the first time it had ever done. We were we were extremely lucky that that thing even made it because Mm. of just the the stuff that was in it. Like it did suffer some damage, but fortunately we were able to fix it beforehand. But there was just so much that could have gone wrong with that. Yeah, if I recalled, the face mask broke like two days before. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. Oh my god. Yeah, um not even 2 days before. Like um it was uh it was like 12 12 hours before. Oh shit. Um, so this Ryan was in had, the hotel room. Well, well, no, this was before we even flew out. Like oh, Ryan had, right. Ryan had been off of work and we were I mean this this is, again this just goes into like the shit storm beforehand and then and whatever but yeah ryan was working on the suit getting it ready uh he was making modifications to the armor and stuff like i lost a ton of weight since i last put that thing on so we were uh, just uh changing things up and he had the helmet fine and then he like we did a costume fitting 
And when he was handing me the helmet, I don't know if, if I just, I thought I had it or if he thought I had it, but the thing dropped and it shattered into like a dozen pieces. And that, and and like, mind, this is like before, you know, the, the flight the next day. And right. I, and I'm just like, holy shit. And Ryan's like, I can fix this. I can fix this. I can fix this. I can fix this. And he spent the entire next day working on the thing, and he fixed it. And honestly, you can never tell that that thing is busted. No, I, you can't. I mean, for, and to, for our listeners and anybody who's interested, the, the hack suit or the, the uh, reviewer one or is it reviewer X seed suit? Well, yeah, technically reviewer one X seed. I mean, it's the same. Yeah, it's now X seed, but yeah. The reviewer X seed suit. It's you know, it's a lot of different pieces made of different materials, but the face mask is completely made of, I think, plaster of Paris, right? Uh, something like that. I, I think it's some kind of resin. Yeah, it's like some type of really, really brittle type of resin that. I mean, it's very strong, but at you know, it can't survive like a seven foot drop. Yeah, it can't. Yeah, onto a tile floor, floor. It, it just ain't gonna happen. But right. you know, Ryan, if there's one thing that I can say about him is that he is truly just a freaking miracle worker. I mean, he's my Scotty man. Um, mm-hmm. he has been in so many situations, sticky situations, uh, where deadlines were upon him, and he just delivers. And every single time, uh he delivers it's typically just it it looks amazing so um yeah i mean i i was very happy with how the suit turned out i'm very very blessed to have known you know to have ryan have worked on that and stuff but you know since he's not around you know locally anymore it's just i think that's probably the last time it's ever gonna see the light of day Mm, that's true what about the inaction figure is that still being worked on or you know um yes (laughs) I mean, there's all these things that that have been announced. It's just like you know, oh well, what's up with that? But yeah, like the uh, the figure um, when he broke his arm last year, uh, or his shoulder, I should say, he uh, that that really put a dampener on it. And since then, he's been just trying to piece his life together. He, he was away from his wife for a year. Not they weren't they weren't right. separated, but she was in New Mexico. He was in Arizona. He was trying to get a work transfer out to New Mexico. But it took him a year to finally get it, and right. he just got out there earlier this year. So I think they're trying to create some kind of sense of normalcy again uh, before he ends up doing it. Plus, he needs uh, – I, I don't remember how much money he needs, but there is a, a dollar amount that you would need in order to mass produce it. Right. But uh, it uh, – yeah, I mean, it looks cool. I really enjoyed it. Um, it, it does more- look cool from what the, the pictures were showing and the – the the concept behind it with the light shining through the bottom of the base that yeah you know that that's his design for that suit like I, i'm not gonna i'm gonna go on the record and be an egomaniac here but i still say that was the coolest freaking reviewing superhero outfit period his designs for uh reviewer one or reviewer two um i just think are awesome because i don't really think that they take any direct reference to anything you know it's not bombing common writer and it's not supposed to be a common writer it's yeah it's no a, that was that was the one host thing. of different things it 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 plays up into sort of the like the whole genre more than just a, a strict a particular homage yeah, it was you know supposed to be kind of common writer Guyver, you know it's kind of more organic Which, looking. You know, yeah, the, I I will say I was like definitely one of the influences, especially with the color scheme is Guyver. I can say. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, the color scheme for uh, for reviewer one, the black and white, I think was just mostly. I, I'm trying to remember how we came across that, but I think it was just he decided that that's what looked best. And then uh, Reviewer 2 was red and black, and that was just because uh, Sheila, who played Cinera, red hair and wore black the entire series, so that just kind of fit. Mm-hmm. Um, reviewer 3, I don't know if you've ever noticed it when when uh, Allison was playing uh, you know, Obscurious Loop in that series, but she always wore purple, mm-hmm. and the Reviewer uh, 3 outfit would have been uh, purple and red, I think. That's what we were going with. Oh, that's cool. Um, so there, we were trying to keep some kind of you know stuff going on with the design. It's not just completely mindless. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, 
Anyways. That, that's how we met. That is how we met, and then we've been discussing life continuously since then. Life, projects, you name it. Yeah. I mean, uh, I will say on my behalf, I'm still shooting insert scenes for uh, for the movie itself. Right. I have a huge fight scene that I actually have to get around to filming at some point. I filmed some green screen parts for it. But... Now, do you, have, do you have a team of people that are helping you? No, just myself and my girlfriend. <laughs> just doing it. I mean, have you seen the picture for it? Yes. Yeah, uh, that that's Gabby in the, the suit. Oh, really? Yeah, that's Gabby in the, the, the cloak suit. Nice. So she... she you know, she always gets a glee out of beating me up as a character. She was <laughs> here's a little here's a little uh sense of trivia knowledge for all our listen oops, I just knocked the microphone. Here's a little trivia knowledge for all our uh listeners here. The ch- the uh choking arm in the s- third hazard rants, which was Howard Duck, which I believe was supposed to be Steven or no, uh George Lucas choking me. That was actually Gabby choking me. And oh, she's, she's so violent. I know she has a very violent te- tendency. She's like, she, I I equate her to to uh, sort of a homicidal Fluttershy. <laughs> she'll uh she'll just have these moments of just. I I I, I regret. I'm gonna say, this. Was, is that a My Little Pony? Thing? Is a My Little Pony reference? Okay, yes. I just wanted to make sure because Listen, at first it kind of went over my head, but I'm like, uh, oh, okay. Uh, homicidal <laughs> Fluttershy. I'm trying to think of what other quiet. Pokemon, uh, what other quiet, um, things there might be, or, I don't know, other quiet characters. Right. But, you know, whatever. Well, uh... Homicidal Fluttershy. Homicidal wow. Flutter, Flutter... Uh, it, well, she, I mean, she's sweet, she's sweet as can be, but, you know, she, you know, she gets glee out of beating... She gets glee she out of... She keeps doing be- line, is what you're saying. Yes, yes, that's very much okay. what it is. Okay. Good. We can get off that topic. No, somebody has to, you know? Somebody yeah. Has to. Yeah, we can get off that topic. <laughs> You're like, moving on. Moving on. So, I now that we've both discussed this, um, let's start getting into a little bit of the nitty-gritty. Let's talk about Monstrosities, the the vlog. What came about... By the way, thank you, thank you again for putting that up on the site. Hey, um, no problems. I mean, I, I'm, I'm hosting people who I find to be... You know, I'm not any other site. I'm just one guy who's like, you know what? This show's interesting. I'm wondering if you'll allow me to post stuff just so I can show it to my minute audience. And you know what? It's every view counts. Exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. so I um, let's talk about monstrosities. How did that come about exactly? I'm trying to recall, but you know, after uh, AZH. Um, uh, we we did Dam and Dam was the review series after all the crap that had happened in Channel Awesome. I think we did like maybe six episodes, and it just kind of came time to just put that thing to rest. And I had had the thought of doing something Tokusatsu related for a long time. I didn't know what I wanted to call it. It was just going to be about everything. You know, it's going to be about the toys, about the you know the movies. Could you know show off people's collections or interview individuals. It wouldn't just be about you know any one particular subject it could be about anything tokusatsu related and uh it got to the point to where i'm just like hey you know what screw it let's just do it and i pulled my buddy will um who had just gotten um, the same camera as yours a t3i mm-hmm. and we shot the first episode not really knowing quite what we were going to do and stuff and uh it it just kind of started off as that um you know just i, I really like even when I was doing the AZH stuff, people were always saying, well, he's he's obviously a toku guy. And, you know, I mean, we, we did, we covered a number of tokusatsu stuff in there, but it wasn't the main thing, the main focus. Uh, but this, you know, it's a subject that I, I enjoy. It's not the only thing I enjoy, but it's, it's fun, it's silly, and uh, it's kind of escapism. You know what I mean? Right. I can also say that you're quite knowledgeable about this topic in general. You generally know how to pull out a lot of uh, material based on this tokusatsu. Such. Sometimes, sometimes I I do I will say that I think I'm okay with kaiju, uh, Kamen Rider, Super Sentai, and all that stuff. 
Um, I it's not that I'm newbie-ish, but I still haven't seen all the series and movies, and uh, information is hard to come by. Like information that's not uh, fan speculation. I don't know if we ever talked about this, but like um, really, the only way to get decent good information is like through uh, certain fanzines and stuff like that. Like uh, articles that actually have a certain uh, journalistic and in uh, integrity behind it, you know, and, and not some fanboy speculating as to what he might think is happening behind the scenes, as opposed to actually what is happening behind the scenes. Mm. And it's all because of the fact that I think of, uh, you know, translations and whatnot, um, having most of your information, you know, being in a foreign language, it's kind of hard for, you know, just your generic English speaker to go out there and be like, oh, yeah, well, let's go read what the latest rumors are about this or that, if that makes sense. But the uh, proliferation of information about Tokusatsu is, uh, I don't know, it, it's always kind of priority number one, because that's really what is interesting about it, you know, educating people about that subject. Yeah, and I will say that you you tend to have a very educating spin to the show. And, I mean, you know, I learned a lot more through watching the show definitely because the it was definitely something that was uh you know i'm not a big fan of kaiju or tokusatsu i mean i think i've told you i've told you i don't know if i've told a lot of people this but my first introduction to any type of kaiju or uh or tokusatsu was initially you know every kid has power rangers and then my first actually thing before Power Rangers was the animated Godzilla series. <laughs> Hanna Barbera up mm-hmm. from the depths. Thirty stories high. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember watching the Godzilla cartoons uh, on like Saturday night. Or not Saturday night, like Saturday morning and watching them like right to back to back with like Speed Buggy and everyone else and what other <laughs> ones. Are you talking about the newer one or are you still talking about Hanna Barbera? Hanna Barbera. Gotcha. Right, well, right, right. Hanna Barbera produced Speed Buggy, if I recall, right? Yeah. I yeah, it was did. like the, like they this was back when Cartoon Network was still sort of new. So they right. they showed the Hanna Barbera cartoons on Saturday, and they were always like it was always sort of like a fun hour. So there were like random shows that w- came with it. Oh, of course, I think there was actually something called the Godzilla Power Hour at one point, but I think that was like when it originally aired, and not the repeats on Cartoon Network. Yeah. True. True. But, but yeah, yeah. I, I loved. Uh, how did you feel about Godzilla's roar, or always sounding like he was like constipated? You know, like, it was. Oh, it was. It was hilarious. <laughs> right? I I I wish to imitate it at some point. <laughs> I'm sure you do. No. Well, Probably go out to karaoke with your girlfriend and sing the theme song. <sighs> You're like, pick another song. You're like, no, I love this one. <laughs> <laughs> no. Just this one. No, I would I would equate most of my uh, screams to more Hulk rage than than Godzilla roar. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, you you've highlighted so many different topics on that show. I mean, you've highlighted uh, mostly it's mostly it it focuses on the toys aspect, which you have an extensive collection. Uh, not extensive as, as some, um, as proven by, you know, if, if the you go Godzilla watch... room. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sam's collection is just uh, astonishing. And, uh, you know, I mean, collecting, collecting is definitely part of it. Um, and I think a lot of these episodes, you know, we do kind of just talk about the swag. Um, and I, I, for a while there, it was kind of felt like that's all we were doing. Cause a lot of people, yourself included, were just like, Oh, so it's like, so it's a, just another toy review show. But then, you know, we're trying to change it up with, you know, interviews. And even if the interviews are, you know, about other collectors, uh, you know, the movie review stuff, we did that, the Godzilla 1954 thing where me and my buddy Brian are going to uh, basically cover every single Godzilla movie period. We actually already have like six reviews filmed. It's just a matter of editing it all together and, and getting it out. Um I, I would like to try to do like a variety thing, you know, as opposed right. to just it being like, it has to be this toy. 
but you know sometimes you know the the toys are are interesting it's it's interesting to say you know hey i found this ultraman toy at a freaking goodwill in phoenix arizona why there's a, an official piece of ultraman merchandise at a goodwill who knows but i it's stuff like that that i'm like oh that, that's cool you know there's a bit of a story behind it you know you can kind of create a story about it in your head it's not something you ordered off of uh you know big bad toy store or something mm. um but yeah, you know my my collection is is decent. I it, it's I'm happy with it. I it, it brings in all the chicks. Let me tell you that. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah. The chicks love the tokusatsu. Um, and uh, yeah, it's oh actually you know you sit there and laugh. There was actually a chick not too long ago who was like, no, tell me all about Godzilla. True mm-hmm. story. True story. I I well I was gonna go ahead. I was I I was trying to think of something that would go along the lines something of something insulting. Yeah, right, right. No, right. no, 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 no. It was something <laughs> along the lines of you know chicks dig Godzilla, uh, ch- chicks dig giant robots. But then I immediately went to Megas XLR and I was like, oh, well, I can't really. Uh. Right. <laughs> And then, and then I was saying just rolling it, it for some reason in my mind I was saying just rolling in the plastic. <laughs> It, you know, you look at guys like TJ Omega. Like, uh, oh, jeez, yes, dude, I, I, his room is like a museum, just of stuff. Like, it, it's it's amazing, and he's constantly getting new things and and you know showing stuff off. I I still like his um uh, uh I still like his Matrix, his yeah. full scale replica of the Matrix. That's yeah. still fascinating to me because I'm like, wow. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't born in 19... That movie was 1989, if I recall, right? The Matrix? No, 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 no. The the, the Transformers. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I misunderstood. Um, yeah. Yes, something like that. Like, 88, 89. Right, so I, I wasn't born back then, but I, I know I, what The I, Matrix so is. Young. I've actually watched that movie. <laughs> yeah, he's... Uh, uh, Tyler is a hell of a cat. Um and he's one of those guys that I don't think he ever really puts out a bad video. It's it's always good, and he's always trying to figure like new stuff. And you know, sure you're getting a toy review, but it's not just like here you go, here's the legs and blah blah. It's filled with humor and you know trivia and makes for a good time. Yeah, and I mean, you. That's just one of the things that I will say about this community is it connects you with so many different people. That's probably the best thing about this community because, mm-hmm. I mean, let, let's be honest. If we didn't have this connecting factor, I would have never met you. No, you, you know, probably you, you, wouldn't. I, and, and, you know, I consider you a good friend. I love talking to you. I love just chilling, chatting, and, you know, hearing about stuff. And most of the people that I converse with now, like, you know, I'm calling – my buddy in Florida, I'm calling my buddy in Buffalo, I'm calling my buddy in Cali, you know, mm-hmm. I'm sitting here talking to you, talking to my buddy in Toronto. Um, it's just like, wow, yeah, it, you, you're just like unified by, you know, this this global thing. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's, yeah. it's just a wonderful thing. And, that, you know, it's just, it's just the luck of the draw. And I would say that most of the, your friends are kindred spirits because they're all uh, independent filmmakers. Not all of them. Not not every single one of them. I mean, it's mostly just. I mean, I think you know, with with you and I, like you know, we we connected over that. You know, we were kindred spirits over the whole. You know, yeah, filmmaking. But there are other people like my buddy Oscar. He's not a film dude at all. He's he's actually um, he works for the city of. of or, whatever the city that he lives in he works for the city and uh mm-hmm. he's a, just a big transformers nut but he's like i, I love he's, that guy to death he's the guy that got you the the decade figure right? yes yes very good yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, that figure billy. is boss yeah <laughs> it, it's a, it's a pretty cool figure and billy up in uh up in buffalo like uh you know um it's uh, he's he's very creative in his own right but mm. you know i think we connected just because like i don't know we're just like that's kind billy of like... from billy's draws too billy yes. from billy yeah. draws too and also um fuse bomb films yeah very works. good wow <laughs> you've done your homework i i keep up with all this stuff man <laughs> i keep up with all this stuff but, uh, you know, and it's it's cool having that network of people. And I think ultimately in the end, that's really what 
you know, strip away all the negativity and all the drama and whatever else you want to say about the community or whatever. And when you're left with these people, it's just like, wow, I got absolutely nothing to bitch or complain about because no. these are, it, it's, it's great. I love it. Yeah. You got like fully connected with your, you know, you just, you, you get connected to some cool cats that sort of put the good, the good tinge on top of all the crap. Oh yeah. It's the couple of, oh, yeah. it's the couple of flies. <laughs> yeah it, it's it's just something else right it's, something, it's very very blessed so uh tell me a little bit of the process that goes into monstrosities um sort of like like your research of the topic how you set up to film and what you actually do to sort of get the glamour shots if you will um Typically, I will just, I, it's probably, I should do it. I don't script. Um, and if I have any kind of script, it's like an outline. It's like, okay, make sure you do this topic or that topic, but I don't pre-script anything out. And what will typically happen is, okay, well, I'll shoot myself doing the monologue stuff and then that'll, you know, do the inner cuts with the B-roll or, or whatever. Um, but as far as, as research goes, um, a lot of, you know, consulting books, consulting uh, DVD commentaries, uh, trying to get certain pieces translated so you can present said information. Like uh, a lot of the videos where a lot of research went into them, like the uh, the I Heart Gudis episode, which is about a uh, this toy from an Ultraman series, the, uh, the one-year anniversary video, the Frankenstein Conquers the World uh, stuff. But, I mean, if it's just a general, I don't know, Something like, uh, you know, uh, give me an example. I, 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 uh, I have like a brain uh, fart here. Uh, I'm um, trying to think. Uh, you, you, you get you get what I mean, though. Like, like there are certain episodes that call the for The Common more... Rider Kiva episode. Yeah, something like that. Like, see, okay, that's a perfect example. I should have done more research about that because I made this really, like, bullshit statement. I'm like, man, this is like the quintessential uh, Kiva toy to have. When in reality, it, it's it's just not. Um, that was something I had found at Savers that day, and I'm like, dude, I got to make an episode right now. And uh, I should have done a little bit more info on that because I got to tell you the truth, I know very little about Common Rider Kiva. Um, well, yeah, I never I watched the series. I mean, you kind of mentioned it with uh, in the videos, like I I know a little bit about Kiva. Right, but you know, it's it's better to present information because, you know, I may know a little, but you know, nothing. And I'd rather, you know, you know, something other than, Hey, it's just a common writer by the end of that episode. But that's kind of what happens, you know? And, and as far as like the, the, the glamor shots and stuff of whether it's the toys or whatever, it's, it's just kind of about just messing around with the camera and figuring out what angles are good. You know, maybe something will be preconceived or maybe it's just like, Oh man, it'd be cool if we could do a, B or C. Um, but it's a, it's a pretty just chill, lax process. And, and that's what I really like it, especially compared to previous things, you know, um, mm -hmm. with it, like just, damn or, or, uh, or, uh, you know, review of saga. Like I, I have taken my lesson that I do not like doing big productions and I, I will, I never see myself either, uh, uh spearheading or, um, necessarily working on a, a huge project like that ever again it just it sucks something out of you and uh you know it's an experience that i think a lot of people should have but it's not something i necessarily find exhilarating mm -hmm. um i prefer something that's just like you know quick simple let's get it done make it look slick and and there you go but that's just my philosophy and it might sound a little lazy in some cases because you know filmmaking it's a freaking art you know doing your lighting getting the sound whatever mm -hmm. and i mean you know it it it's such a an array of like videos i'll keep going and eat detail blowing smoke up your ass about that i mean you know from the video reviews to the 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 comic book or not comic book review nor didn't you highlight the Giver comic at one point no uh we talked about it in uh one of the more recent episodes because somebody had asked uh about it we got a Giver episode coming up mm. that is going to be talking about some like these collection pieces i have but we haven't never done a comic book before right 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 and you 
I mean, you know, I will say that sometimes you also say that you have no connection. Do you have some connection to the Tokusatsu actual film production community, if I recall? Um, not my the thing with monstrosities, and I, I've kind of done this on purpose. And I'm sorry for giving you all these really long-winded answers, but like, mm-hmm. I haven't gone directly out to like the Tokusatsu community and being like, "Hey, here I am." Like, you only see monstrosities through channels like yours because you know you asked to put it up there, and I'm like, "Well, yeah, geek vision." Uh, but you know, primarily, I just throw this shit up on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, and Tumblr, YouTube. and and YouTube, and that's it. Um, there are people like I, I talked about um, in one episode briefly mentioned uh this series called spears trinity mm-hmm. and spears trinity have you have you seen this yet uh i might have taken a look at it at some point but haven't fully oh seen it oh my gosh it's these guys out in indonesia i believe and uh dude just some probably the best tokusatsu fan made series ever probably because it looks the most legit it's not play fighting it's not in some like you know high school football field um you know, these guys are like in warehouses and they're, you know, flying through, uh, you know, walls and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. there's actual martial arts and the suits look great. Um, it, it's whatever. It's great. But like I mentioned these guys and I got a message from them saying, you know, well, thank you for the mention. And it was just really brief, but then all of a sudden they started following me on Twitter and I'm like, Holy crap, like, this is awesome. And you know, I, I don't know if they watch the show or anything, but it's, you know, it's nice to have made even a small connection with them because I their work is just astounding. Um, right, and I mean, you can say that with a lot of other people, uh, such as uh, such as the guys who do Regulators, who are now currently in pre production for their first Tokusatsu series. Yeah, for Nights Elite, yeah, 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 yeah. Billy, Billy again. Right. Yeah, um, with Regulators, you know, and I, I've told Billy this, and I'm just being perfectly honest. You know, I got I had issues with with that series and it was mostly just with some of the execution and mm. um and i told billy this and I'm, I'm not putting it down but again you got to realize that this is the first time that him and his team ever did something like that and for a project that was that big i mean they've done pretty well i mean they've been covered in uh one of the uh niagara falls newspapers there locally they've had panels at con bravo um they got another one coming up at uh, intervention con and another one booked after that. And he he's just, he's doing amazing stuff with this work. And I cannot wait to see what they do with say Knights Elite or the mm-hmm. second thing of regulators. Um, because the more, you know, he works in that field, the more he's going to get comfortable, the better off he's going to be. And with that motivation and stuff like that, that ambition and actually being able to deliver product, like that's, that's something that sets him apart from, uh, well, a lot of people that I think both you and I probably know, if that true. makes sense. Yeah, true, true, true. And I mean, you would also m- mention, uh, I, I mean, you know, other tokusatsu series that are sort of coming into the coming into the foray. One that uh, we both are waiting anticip- uh, waiting fully for is uh, the Famicom and Rider. Yeah. Um... I I honestly can tell you that I have no idea what is going on with that as of right now. Mm. I I mean you know I I have had some contact with Justin so I I I have some little insider insight into it right. and stuff like that and I mean I'm also uh I don't know if I should say eh, I'll give a little bit I'm producing uh I produced a track for his series oh that's right you did didn't you and i'm also in the process of possibly making two more for it good but good. um he's really going to need music for that yeah good music for that. and by the way uh your title track for monstrosities is actually going to be in uh what will probably end up being the next uh episode coming out good because i've been waiting for that for a couple of months now <laughs> mister <laughs> I, 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 was... I needed the right time to use it. it it's a good track, but it, it needs to be, you know, it, it needs to be used properly. Well, you no, know, I, I get that fully, and I, I, I know that you usually use it when it is best for its use. So I get that whole process. And I, I mean, I, I initially had composed it just out of a, just sitting, sitting at a desk, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to write a song for Matt today. And I was just, <laughs> started plunking away at the keys and then 
it, you know, later at the night, I was like, here it is. Finally oh, dude, I, I, I dig that track. We we loop it a couple times in the mm-hmm. uh, Raids Again episode, and uh, it, it just totally fits. Right. I really dig it. And, I mean, that's one thing is, uh, you know, I, the collaborative process is sometimes it's it's better to just have unsolicited stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, I uh, I mean, uh, I don't know if you want to go into a lot of detail about this, but what is, like, the typical gear that you use for the show? The typical what? The, like, the typical gear and, oh, like, typical your typical edit, editing system that you use. Um literally just the camera just the t3i mm-hmm. um i i don't use lighting i probably should it would probably produce a much better uh picture obviously um using lighting and, and knowing how to properly use it, it it just makes things look so much better so much more professional but whatever um but yeah it's it's typically just a tripod the the camera you know the sd cards whoop de do and then uh, I use uh, Premiere. I've, I've, I will always, forever be a Premiere guy. I refuse to use Avid um, mm-hmm. in that editing. I've never used Final Cut Pro. Uh, I've heard they shot themselves in the f- foot when they uh, did what Final Cut X or whatever it was. Yeah, Final Cut X. It's 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 its own breed. It's you know coming from someone who edits on a Mac and uses both Premiere and uh, Final Cut Pro. Final Cut X is sort of a a dumbed down version of the Final Cut Pro that I use. See, that's what I heard. Like, and I don't get it. Like, Avid is such a dinosaurian program. I don't know if you've ever used it before. Uh, I've um, I've recently obtained it <laughs> and might be learning it a little bit. And I understand. I it's a huge learning curve. And I use another Avid program. I use Pro Tools, which wasn't originally bought by Avid, but uh, I use Pro Tools for a lot of my audio stuff. Right. So, you know, and even that has a huge-ass learning curve to it sometimes. The thing I don't like about Avid is the fact that here you have something like Premiere and Final Cut, which is fairly easy to use, but it's like... With Avid, it's like, no, you have to learn the ways of the creature in order to fully unlock its power. Right. You know, you got to do a rain dance and sacrifice a goat and then throw yourself into the inferno and you will become an Avid master. It, it, it's such BS. You rise with a giant A on your chest. Yeah, well, you, exactly. Like um, the film school I went to, like they were a complete Avid school. Uh, and I think it was because Avid gave them a bunch of free copies. Mm-hmm. But... uh uh, yeah, dude, it's it's just it's terrible. Um, and unfortunately, I think it's it's still like industry standard. Yeah, say. Avid is still industry standard. Though, like, if at this point with me, industry standard is such a bullshit term because mm-hmm. it. First of all, what industry are you talking about? There's so exactly. many different multiple industries. And second of all, if you want to, I mean, if you're going into like feature film Hollywood territory, yeah, they might be using Avid. But if you go into anything else, you, you're just in freaking no man's land. You got Pro, Final Cut Pro, you got Pr- Premiere, and then there are other, other schlock. There's other, or not schlock, there's other ones that they use. Like, I've... I, and, and yeah, all I, I've, heard pe- I've heard people using Pinnacle, okay? Oh, yeah. yeah. And I remember using Pinnacle way back when, when I didn't know a a freaking cut from a, a fade. So <laughs> Yeah, it's it, it just it makes a world of difference. Um I learned Premiere and Avid basically simultaneously and Premiere was just so much more fun to use. And you know, I think editing should be a fun experience. I don't think it should be um a tribulation. I don't think it should be just this arduous hard work. There should be a, you know, you should feel at ease and be able to you know, to use your palette of tools to create something interesting and not be frustrated by, you know, the program or not knowing this shortcut for that or whatever. Um, but anybody who's getting into video editing, I, I'm always like, dude, find a way to get Premiere. Uh, it, it's I, if you're I, on a Mac, find a way to get Final Cut Pro. Though Premiere, and, and that's what I hear too about Final Cut Pro because I just hear nothing but amazing things about that. I, well, here's the thing. I mean, for me, Final Cut Pro is o- because that I that's what I learned on. I learned on Final Cut Pro. But to tell you the all oh, truth, honesty, if you want to do anything 
like f eye catching or at least where you want to use um after effects along with mm -hmm. go directly to premiere yeah because the linking just builds so much more better for it and it builds it, it's just it's a much easier process than working with final cut pro and then after effects yep and you know that's something that I I've learned very much the hard way, and I I mean I'm slowly learning Premiere. It's not much of a difference, but it's still you know. Well, of course, of course, you're still trying to learn the the lingo, as it were. You know? Right, it's apples but at and least, oranges. But I bet I bet you can still do way more with Premiere and Final Cut Pro than you could do in Avid. Like, oh yeah, true. <laughs> sorry, I, I try to bash Avid every chance I get. It's just a. That's ugh. okay. I I I hear people who bash. Uh, I, I, I know people who bash, like, Final Cut Pro, and I'm like, why? Because we like editing hard things. The like, that's the thing. Like, Avid users pat themselves on the back because, you know, it took them, like, three years to actually learn how to do the program. Right. You know, they can, they can finally add in a fade, and that makes them a Jedi Master now, you know, because that's why they look down upon, you know, Premiere and Final Cut, because anybody can use those. No, I mean... And I don't know what the basis was for the person I was talking to who hated Final Cut. Yeah. They're all just like, I hate it. It's so confusing and hard and stuff like that. And I feel like, uh, I feel like the kid from uh Back to the Future where you see Marty McFly go and shoot out every uh, where he's uh playing shootout, and he goes, yeah. "You have to use your hands. That's like a baby's toy." <laughs> And I mean, that's like the same thing with me. I'm like, but this is a baby's toy. Anybody exactly. can pick it up. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So let's go into a little bit of something. You also do a lot of effects work. Or, um, Not so much anymore, but yeah. You used to yeah. do a lot of effects work. And uh, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going off of a question. So this includes certain, some, you did, did you do some effects work on regulators? I did one effect shot to regulators, just mm -hmm. one, and that was the very first episode. There's a guy that gets shot by a, uh, a taser gun, right. yeah, yeah, which is like one of the easiest things to do in that program. Okay, um, and not that great of an effect, but Billy was happy with it. So. No, no, it looked very good. And I mean, just seeing some of the effects because you've worked on things you've worked on. I mean, the reviewer verse is probably your biggest stuff. Uh, I would have to say, uh, my favorite is your intro to Monstrosities, the I Heart Gatus episode. Oh, thank you. Yeah, which, Gutis. Which, yeah, Gutis. Um, uh, I mean, you've worked on one of the anniversary specials as well. Yeah, Suburban Nights, yeah. couple of shots. I mean, you know, what got you into that process of doing effects work and such? It it was really a matter of necessity. Um, when we were doing reviewer verse, uh, and it evolved into the, the story that what it was, and we were going to have, Oh, these explosions and this and this and that. I knew I was going to have to learn at some point in time because it, it just, it was going to require it. So, um, it was, I think it was episode three was really when the after effects just came into play with the laser gun fight. What it's not the greatest thing in the world, but, um, you know, started off there and then episode four, when the costume comes up for the first time, then it was just about, you know, trying to get this done and that done and, and creating all this crap. And all of a sudden, you know, we're having, uh, lightning bolts come down and big explosions and boom, there's a, there's a powered super being right there now. Right. Um, but yeah, it, again, it was it was a matter of necessity. I think that anybody working in editing and or filmmaking should have at least a, a little bit of sense of how, you know, effects work, uh, the optical effects and stuff like that, which is really what After Effects is. It's it's nothing. It's, it's not composite. CGI or anything. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like composite effects um, because there's a lot of things you can accomplish with that. There's a lot of things, a lot of tricks, a lot of little things and things that people might not notice. And, uh, you know, things that were formerly impossible, you can be like, well, I can actually do it with this and, and that. And mm -hmm. I mean, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of what it was. Uh, episode six, the when the first introduction of the reviewer Exceed. 
is just one of the coolest scenes on the oh thank you yeah and i i mean i would equate that to both the music but also just the editing and the effects work it just it all worked really well thank you yeah that that was um i think episode six had probably the most ambitious uh shots I, I think i mean even looking back on it now there's there's a couple of things that were done kind of sloppily but i think the I, i'm glad that we were trying to do something a little bit more you know there were spaceships in episode six yeah but you know there's spaceships in suburban or not suburban i said the boldly flee and they were cgi like the spaceships in um in that were were just these 2d cutout images which i honestly cgi is like the one thing that i have absolutely no sense of um i don't play with it i don't know anybody who does um but yeah like i i personally love using that style the 2d images because there's a lot you can do there too um Mm -hmm. accomplish and stuff uh but it, it was it was a lot of fun um and i think that anybody again going into editing should at least do something involved or at least heavily involved with that kind of compositing, because if you have that kind of understanding, there's a, again, there's a lot of things that you can just be like, Oh yeah, we can do this now. Right. Whatever. Cause that I could see the 2d compo I could see the 2d compositing with the Gudis episode. Oh, that's all it was. It was yeah. stock footage and, and pictures. That's all it was. And it was never meant to be anything else. I was just having fun with that. I, um, I had wanted to kind of do something, Along those lines, and I, I guess I don't remember how it came about, but it's just like, oh, okay, well, let's do this, and and I don't know, I, th- I think it worked, but that that was a mixture of of stock footage and pictures and footage that I had already taken, and and uh, just taking all those elements together and throwing it in the you know the editor and and being that alchemist that kind of creates this this thing out of those those elements is just uh, it's a lot of fun, you know, and that that's something I really enjoy. I don't know about you, like I don't know if you how you feel about editing, but that's how editing editing is probably one of the biggest joys. Uh, I just recently got done with a project and I, you know, I'd been, pre- was it your, was it your, uh, uh, thesis? No, my thesis, uh, actually I got to do the rough edit on that. And then I sent it over to Joel, who gotcha. is my, my, was my producer. He's a solid editor and he also, he, you know, he had a lot of the effects heavy stuff, and we were, he which was, was pretty cool. By yeah, the way. he was working joint heavy with um my uh, CG artist to build the house. So nice. Yeah. So when the that was the only effect that I wish we had done a little bit more with was my the, thesis. The house. Yeah, if we'd done a little bit more, like added some smoke or something, so it looked a little bit more. I don't know. I, I just remember the fact that you have CGI in there. Like I, that's again, I'm even the the most basic CGI. If you have it in there and if it works, I'm just like, whoa, that's cool, you know. Yeah, um, no, it was it was it was a fun it was a fun film to make, it, and it was a fun film to see it fully come into play. Right. Right. Yeah, I remember seeing when the house rises. I was like, oh, it's a 2D image, and then I started seeing like the depth to it. I'm like, wait a minute, what is this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he, my CG artist Brett, uh, who's a good friend of mine, he he worked his ass off on that, and I was oh, very, I like, I got to see him through the process of shading it, and then putting lights in the house, and then putting, like, he had all these little details. I'm like, oh, this is so cool, and then I showed it. I showed it to my mom because that's the house that it, the house is actually it's my parents' house, and then when I showed <laughs> that scene where it was, my mom's like. What happened to the house? Why is it lifting up? And I'm like, uh, don't worry about it. That's awesome. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was very cool. And to go back to the project, no, nah, it's just another episode. Uh, it's an episode that I'm working on with a fellow reviewer, uh, Rosenhacker. It was oh, something Rosenhack, that yeah. we we had been working on for. Uh, we started filming in like March, and then I got to I. I've been sporadically editing it through the past five months because I've just had no time, and then I finally got it finished last night. <laughs> and I had started, like, I had just picked up the the uh, the project again, like, two, two or three days ago, and I've been just happily click editing away since. 
because <laughs> editing to me is like with all of my pro with all my projects is seriously one of the the only times where I feel I can be the most like controlled with it. Oh man! Oh mm -hmm. yeah! And 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 it's. I mean, you know, everyone will say is like you can fix it in post, but I mean, you can really do some magic in post. Oh yeah, you you can. I mean, I always think that if you took like a you like you can always make the quality of your product like one level above. Does that make sense? Like yeah. if you have a if you have a crappy movie. You can make it bad. If you have a good movie, you can make it great. If that mm -hmm. makes any sense, just by utilizing the the editing, you know, right, and doing right. it properly. And I mean, that was my that was my whole thing. And this is, you know, this is a it's a fairly weird, quirky thing that I'm filming with Rosen. So it wasn't something where I'm like doing a whole lot of effects work. But there was, you know, like keyframe animation things that I was doing, and I'm like. God, this is what I remember because for the past five months I've been on hiatus. Right. I haven't done anything really creative, and I just feel like I feel a like, you know I really get itchy and annoyed and grumpy to the point of like almost like self like self defacing. Really. When I don't get to do stuff, and I really really like you know, I just like getting back into the swing of things. I was just so. I was I was in the moment. I was happy. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what you mean. And, you know, yeah, I mean, that's what we can both typically say is that, we, you know, editing is always uh, the hugest process of the, of the film. Anything can be shot, but, you know, you're just left with... To, yeah, to, to basically compose those images into a uh, cohesive entity is... Uh, it, it takes more than just stringing it together, you know. I mean, there, it's an art form, um, mm -hmm. and I'm not sitting here like saying, "Oh, we are master artists," but no. it's it's <laughs> Far uh, from it. yeah, it's it's just something that you know um, brings joy. Yeah, it brings joy, and and it, it's a just art at its purest. Yeah, art at its purest, and very much so. So I'm gonna go into more questions if that's okay with you, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you have go to go it. anywhere? Or you... No, 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 dude. I I'm on vacation for a week, so oh. like you have me for as long as you can handle me, or as you want me. <laughs> so I'll, I'll I'll keep you for this full entire week. <laughs> yeah, there you go, there you go. I'll be like, hey, right. I gotta catch a plane. You're late, but Matt. Matt, the but the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> we haven't talked about what you thought about the final season of Friends yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like no, we already it, covered family matters. I don't want to go into friends. But 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 <laughs> but Ross and Rachel, they got <laughs> off the plane. Uh oh so I mean one of the questions I, I, I like to ask a lot of people is like what is your what are some of your inspirations? Like what drove you into this madness known as creativity? Um, the, uh, you know, I, I think, um, I've always been a person who, who liked to, uh, to create stuff. I mean, it, it just, as a kid, you know, drawing or, or, uh, mm. writing or whatever. My dad was a writer, um, wrote a book, uh, newspaper articles. He was a movie critic for years and uh, he had a major influence on me. Um, major, 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 and always just encouraged, you know, me to, Keep doing stuff like this senior hat and yeah yeah, yeah. and uh and yeah um you know just you know seeing movies and stuff i i think that i really like that art for me I mean, for a long time i really wanted to be a writer but i i think you can do more with you know film media visual medium and uh that seems to be the case with a lot of filmmakers that i, I i've talked to is they started off writing and then they yeah. sort of morphed into filming yeah yeah it, it it takes i i can see that i can i can totally see that um yeah i mean that's really what happened like i always loved movies i was lucky enough to get you know put in to work on a couple of really 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 low you know indie films around here locally that say what you will they were you know the product was crap but the uh, the opportunities and the and the fun times there were you know priceless uh, affected me yeah priceless and affected me a lot and all that stuff so 
pretty much that. <laughs> right, and that's and and I mean, you know, you you've been creative ever since. I can obviously say that, and you 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 took away from those experiences more than what you than what they gained from you. Yeah, um, you know that that's that's the one thing I think filmmaking, at least for me, is all about. Um, I don't ever see myself actually fully getting a job in the uh, the filmmaking field. Like, I will never work on a Hollywood set. I will never work um, uh, for a major, you know, company or, or anything because I, I, I just I feel like I just don't fit in that mold. But the experiences that you have from doing those things, again, like you were saying, is priceless. You know, and they're, they make for great stories and great just experiences and uh yeah um you you learn a lot by doing stuff like that you know about yourself about the process um i I can tell you this if you told me uh four or five years ago that i was going to get into editing a whole time i would have been like kidding but i honestly like i just kind of fell into it it just it wasn't something i went into expecting to love i just kind of happenstanced upon it and i was like oh man this is i enjoy this more than any other thing in this field right 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 i mean you know uh what was i going to add to that um Oh no! I was gonna go and remember, kids, don't go to film school. Just get onto a set. You know, amen to that. Like film school is. I want. I, I, you, you talk about film school. I mean, what are your what are your thoughts about it? Um. Uh, right now, I will still say I'm jaded, only because it's been five months. But right. um, or not five months, three months since I've. Uh, left my institution of film um but generally speaking i think it's a great opportunity to meet like-minded individuals and you are possibly at your most creative when you are in film school because you don't have life prodding you Mm -hmm. you're pretty much just left to your own devices to create and that's it and i i you know you're not worrying about or i wouldn't say you're not completely but you're not fully worrying about Where's my next paycheck coming from? Where's this coming? Co- where, yeah. you know, what's, you know, did I leave the curling iron on? Those sort of things, because ultimately it's, you're creating and you're yeah. surrounded by people. So I think film school is a great networking environment. And it's a great, it's a great environment to be uh, creative in. But other than that, it's not really going to give you the actual experience. Yeah, I mean, it's hands-on for the equipment, yeah, meeting like-minded people, absolutely. I mean, I met all my circle of really, really good friends through the school that I went to. Uh Um, But, uh, yeah, I don't know about you, but, you know, I found my film school to be creatively stifling, you know? You can't do this. You have to do it like this. No, believe me. I mean, the the thesis... The thesis um, process was probably the most creative, creatively stifling part of it. Yeah. Because at the same time you're, you, at the same time you're creating, you know, your final thesis is whatever you want it to be. You know, right. it's it's fully, it's it's not f- technically for a letter grade. It's just for exhibition at the end of the year. It's what you want. It's what you want to produce. Right. But at the same time, it's you have to go and submit your script to the committee. And the committee can look at your script and say, this is shit, I don't understand it, and then you have to go and rewrite it to their standards. And it's kind of like, well, weren't we supposed to, isn't this supposed to be just, you know, we want our project when we want... But the problem is that they, I feel like those guidelines are set up so that not everyone turns in porn at the end of the year or something. But ultimately, it's, you know, it is a both creative, creatively stifling process because you're like, but I just put two weeks into this script and you don't understand this? Oh, dude, yeah. You know, uh, when we did uh, Legna 20, that was my basically first and only student film that I ever did. Um, they for this project like for this series of classes that we had to do they basically called it like film school boot camp like the first class is like you know pre-production then you would shoot and then uh the following semester with that class and then the class after that you would uh 
um, presented and edited together, whatever. But the thing was, they were like, you have to shoot on 16 millimeter film. Right. Like you have to, you have to like use these old school freaking Vietnam cameras where like the film stock, I don't remember how much it cost, but let's it say was... it cost like 10 bucks a foot yeah. or something. And, and it's still Five, like, really? it was, you know, 500 feet was about 50 bucks. Something like that. And then you had to go and get it, uh, what, telecined or whatever it was. And uh, the process fee on that was going to be, yeah, it was going to be uh, something ridiculous. And, you know, I, I was just like, this is retarded. And, and this is, I guess, when they present you these roadblocks, you know, you should be able to be like, okay, well, how can I get around this? And I did it because, A, I thought it was kind of a cool idea, but B, also because of the fact that it saved me a hell of a lot of money. I went and I told the teachers about like them, like, look, I want to film this, like, visual Frankenstein monster where some of it is film and some of it is, some of it is like, still photography and the rest of it is digital. And it's just this mashup of creations, like, it's stitched together and it just looks whatever. And, dude, they ate that up. They're like, right. yes, you can do this. Oh, yes. And I shot the majority of that thing on, on digital. And I had a lot of people pissed off at me, but I'm like, hey, it's not my problem. <laughs> you know, I, you know I, I didn't follow. I, what? The teacher I, told I, me to jump off the bridge. I was the one like, no. There are literally like maybe only two sequences in the final film. Uh, I, I, I'd say sequences because they they're there's more than one shot mm-hmm. that are shot on 60 millimeter, but they're so color corrected and filtered to hell that you would never be able to tell to begin with. Right. You know, but it's stuff like that that I'm just like, dude, just, you know, give us tools and, and let us do what we want to do. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, well, you know, that's what film school is. Is Basically, they'll be like, give us tools and then we create the thing that you will get to watch and then you don't have to say anything about it and then you just give us a grade. Yeah. That is what we want it to be. That yeah. is not what it is. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, like I said, it. For people who are going into film school, I'm not dissuading you from going into it. Um, just don't expect to get into the industry through that film school unless okay. you are fucking lucky. Yeah. Because yeah. there are there are plenty of people who I know who were very very lucky through my film school f- through my school who got jobs in the industry, but they were they were busting their asses and they didn't listen to the teachers at all. And they didn't worry about the school. And the school was sort of more of a benchmark. It was a place where they got to go to home to sleep, and then the, instead of going to classes, they would go to their job. And then th- two years into the film school, they were like, you know, I've experienced all that I need from this industry without even having to, having to go to the school. And then they dropped out, and now are just working professionals. So yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, that's awesome. It's just all it, it, it. It's everyone has a different path. Oh, I don't think you, you could have put it better. Yeah, I totally agree. And you know, you know, the the like I said, I'm only I I've only just graduated three months from now. I'm currently working at a, a you know five dollar an hour minimum wage job. So I'm not what you would say in the film industry. I'm trying to be in the film industry attempting to do things that I want to do, but I'm trying to cut my own path through. Dude, a couple of years ago, um, when I was, uh, I was a a cart pusher. Ooh, Ooh. I push carts, but I guarantee you, I I got paid a hell of a lot more than a lot of you. Not, not to brag, just saying I got a pretty good job. Anyways. Um, there was a guy who, uh, had a master's degree in architecture and I pushed carts with him for a couple of years because he couldn't find a job anywhere. And finally he got a job. Um, later down the line, and uh, yeah, you know, you just you do what you got to do in order to put um, money on the table, and right? Money to, to you know get money to put food on the table, and to uh, fund projects that you want to do. Absolutely, I mean that's the only reason that like reviewers got funded or any of those projects. It's just like you know, um, you get mm-hmm. that, and you and you give yourself opportunity with that. So. And I mean, both of us are, we're not cautionary tales, but we're not like tales of, uh, we're not uh, tales of success either. We're tales of still going on. Well, I mean, it's an ongoing story. Ongoing story. Um, There's a never ending story. There's a guy who. (laughs) You're you're the guy with the snail. Um, No, I'm Valkyor. You're Val. No, you're not. Actually, no, no, you're the Night Hob. That's who you are. (sighs) (laughs) <laughs> Matt, 
I would have. I mean, like, I would have accepted something like Rock Biter, but you know what? Fuck. Look, look, look! It's not my fault that nobody gives a hoot about you and your stupid bat. Okay. <sighs> Just whatever. <laughs> whatever, um, Malkior or whatever your name is. I'm trying to remember. Malkior? What? What are you talking about? I'm trying to tell. Wait, what's the horse's name? Artex, really? Yes. Malkir, Artex. Where did Artex. you pull that from? I thought they. I don't know. Malkior or somebody else. That's a different character. Yeah, Ar- Artex's death scene is pretty much my uh, my whole life in the review reverse. <laughs> yeah, no, that's pretty much a policy <laughs> hack. <laughs> a policy hack is Artex. Artex, get up! You're sinking. You know, and that whole music was playing the right. whole time. Artex, you know? no, no. <laughs> I remember I, I came across a YouTube video. Do you know Titus from Final Fantasy thirteen or I do not. 12? I didn't play anything after seven. Yeah, no, it, he's like this really annoying character, and there's this scene where he's laughing, and it's the most obnoxious laugh on the planet because he's supposed to be laughing to brighten up his spirit or whatever. Right. And they said tight. Someone had taken the laugh from that scene, and it was titled Titus's laugh ruins emotional events and one of them was Artex sinking and you just hear a Titus's laugh in the background while the horse is sinking. Oh my god. It's like, okay, childhood immediately stabbed and left in a ditch. Dude, that, you, that scene was actually pretty well done in that movie. Oh. Um, and the thing is, you're not I mean, you're. I think people care because it's a horse, but I mean, realistically, it's not that far into the movie. Right. And you don't really have that much of an emotional attachment to that horse, but that scene, the music, and just the well, freaking were... drama that you're just like, oh my god! I was probably... No, I'm not crying. I'm not crying. Nope, nope, not a tear. I was probably six or seven when I saw that movie, so I, yeah, I broke down and cried at that scene. Yeah, I I, I grew up watching Never Ending Story. Um, mm-hmm. Just a hell of a great film, but yeah. How did we get on that subject? What were we talking about? I don't know. You you, you went on. Uh, uh, I started singing "Never Ending Story" because we were both talking about. Oh, like, the... well, that's right. Because you said you said we're not success stories. Um, we're 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 a continuous story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, again, it's it's just it's all about what you said. It's about different paths. You know, I know people who started at the same time that I did, who are still just going from grip job to grip job to grip job to grip job to grip job. job. And that's all they're doing, you know? And if that's what they want to do, okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I find much more uh, stimulation in the fact that I know for a fact that there are people that whenever I put out a video, like they will go and watch that, like that, that immediate response to that, like that's what every filmmaker wants. You know, they want to put out their product and they want to get that audience and they, and they want to, you know, to get that reaction or whatever, you know, it's just, it's, part of the stimulus it's part of the process and uh i don't know man like the internet so-called reviewing internet video stuff like it's it's a pretty good medium to be in um well it's, it's because it's, rewarding. It's, it's pretty it's pretty good for that instant gratification uh, that instant gratification and instant response right definitely i mean definitely i agree i agree yeah, but anyway from your apology hack days well, you know, like I even had a guy uh, yesterday, in fact, um, started talking about Apollo. Mm-hmm. And um, again, I'm not don't don't get me wrong where I'm, I'm 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 not trying to come off like bragging or anything. But, you know, when all that stuff went down, uh, when we when I left and, and quit, like I was getting all these messages from people just saying, you know, man, thank you for showing me this movie. And I wish this would have happened. But I understand. I just want to say thank you for the work. Mm-hmm. And you're just like. Dude, all I did was just put on an eye patch and, and do this and do that, but it meant something to people, and that that's just a supremely humbling thing, you know. Yeah. For every for every hater that's out there and saying, you know, oh, this product's horrible or this is that that's bad, you know, you have this other person that was just deeply affected by it. There's a, the 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 haters are the general minority in the crew. For every right. one hater, there's about five or six good positive things that somebody will say to you. Yeah. The the hater shit just cuts deeper, right? Because you're you know you're slowly bearing a little bit of your soul with each video. I I think that the more haters you have, and the more haters that bring you up in like random conversations and places, makes you more relevant. Yeah, <laughs> you, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, it's, like, it's oh, that man. it's you know bet you know good, 
bad press is always as good as is just as good as no uh, good press. Exactly, exactly. You know, they're like, oh, you're, they're still talking about crap that happened two years ago. Okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> whatever. And I mean, but, comparative to your uh, leaving of that guy with the glasses, it really, I mean, it wasn't really much on my radar during that time. Like I had heard murmurs and whispers about it, very much so, but I had not really. Like, I had known about you, and I had known about, like, the video work that you had created, but I hadn't really heard anything else otherwise about it. And, and that's awesome. But, but yeah, like, um, it, it, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, it was kind of just a, a vague blip on your radar, because at the time, it was, to, I mean, being at the center of it, it was made to seemed like it was this really really big hardcore deal and even to this day uh i'm still seeing people talk about this and how i lied about that and i lied about this never lied about anything like i love how the story's just like evolved in this epic tale of you know oh yeah he did this and then that happened and then she did that and uh it's it's just a mess but it's entertaining you know yeah I mean, no it's very if you're gonna put yourself out there you're gonna, you're gonna get that kind of reaction and i and i think that's kind of like what was the emphasis on your what the frack happened to hack uh oh yeah the the what the frack happened to a policy hack yeah that was that was supposed to just be a parody i think it actually pissed off some people and whatever there was somebody right before magfest that actually said something along the lines of they weren't sure if that was supposed to be taken seriously or humorously. And I'm just like, if you really cannot tell the difference, man, you got to get your head checked. No, like, I mean, nobody... like I knew it was completely humorous and, and, and this was still before I had met you. This was right. still before I had met anybody else that was involved in that project. I mean, it was just something that I found, you know, like I saw it on the lines of something like a Monty Python type mockumentary. It was it was supposed to be goofy. It was supposed to be make fun of a really really stupid situation. And the fact of the matter is, like the only people that still talk about it are a me because I. Uh, just, it was you know. It, it's it's a big part of of my personal history with it. But there are also people that just randomly bring it up, um, because uh, you know they they think it, it somehow illustrates how uh, how bad I am or or how bad the community is or whatever. But for the most part, most people just are like, wait, what happened? Like, it's it's just such not a thing, but yet mm-hmm. it, it affected a lot of people, and it was just a, a stupid, stupid thing. And then, you know, they talk all this crap about people, and then when it actually comes time to be face-to-face with the person they're talking crap about, they will cower, they will try to avoid that person, and they will go, this happened at MAGFest. You saw that happen, Patrick. I know you did. <laughs> uh, slightly. <laughs> I saw it slightly happen. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't I wasn't there for a lot of it. I was remember, I was the one who told you when you were in the full suit because Yes, you're going to you told me you were going to kick my ass. I remember this well. well I'm like, because, "Wait a minute." Well, because you're because like maybe this is just me and I can't really say I can't really say, but I could somehow judge body language through you and when you're in the suit, you have a different body language to when you are, you know, just mad. <laughs> You, you like when you put on the suit. I think you actually sometimes believe that you are, uh, the exceed, and that wait, you're. Wait, 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 wait! You're telling me I'm not? Well, I'm no, not I believe I believe, <laughs> believe just, me. I'm you're in a kidding. body. You're, you're in body armor, so you at least have one one thing above other people that you would be facing in said real life reality, as it were. But it was one of those things where it was like, I, oh. you know, I'm like. If I have to put this camera down and take Matt aside, pull off the helmet, and <laughs> smack him across the head for saying something really stupid, all because he thinks he he's super, I'm I will do it. <laughs> but see, it's not just about that. It's about the fact, and and this is the big dirty little secret, mm-hmm. is that all the crap that is talked about on the internet, especially in this community, um, you know, when when uh, they're confronted with it, and it's not. Uh, in a in internet text, and it's not thousands of miles, uh, you know, separating you from that individual. Uh, most of the time, the people who are the aggressors, the people who are making the accusations, the people that are, are talking that shit, they're not going to do anything. No, they're you not. Know? They're 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 either going to try to ignore you, or 
or they're they're just gonna just pretend or you know look really nervous i mean that happened so much there and honestly when i was going to macbeth i wasn't knowing what to expect but when i was seeing that systematic reaction uh there was one guy won't mention names uh he liked to talk a lot of crap and i caught sight of him we we locked eyes for all but two seconds and his head snapped away so fast it looked like he shit his pants and saw a ghost at the same time Mm -hmm. you know i'm not sitting here saying i'm some kind of badass because i'm not but the fact of the matter is you're dealing with a bunch of people that have absolutely no social skills whatsoever and um they, they they don't they're they're cowards that's really what it comes down to so yeah so you know when you're in the bodysuit and stuff and you got like this entourage of like crew with you and stuff i mean of course you're gonna feel a little bit empowered no nah, dude yeah. your body language was like i could kick someone's i could totally kick someone's ass right now and uh, I'm, I'm not like, gonna lie i'm not gonna lie it, it's and, and i will stick by this statement i don't care how it makes me sound um if anybody like had started something uh about that stuff you it would have happened right it, it would have happened and i would have been the first one to headlock you and bring well, you of, of course of course i mean there's a lot of people to do that but there and i'm not and i mean like i'm not strong in the slightest but i'm like there's just one thing <laughs> like in the foot in the feet feet of the moment i like I know how to deal with assholes. I can be a bouncer if I need to. You know, and again, it's it's not about it's not about trying to to be badass. It's not trying to, to about... be the better guy. You're just it's just they have no filter. No, absolutely none whatsoever. For them, everybody else is in the wrong. They're always in the right. I've mm-hmm. made my mistakes. I've apologized for my mistakes. There are people out there that have never ever apologized for anything. Um, but on the same token, there are plenty of people within the community who I thought had problems that did come out and apologize and, and straighten things out yet there are some there are some people that we will like you had just said it's like they they have humility to them look at lewis lewis will go and i, I mean you remember how he was in the shoot this guy is one of the top what three guys from that guy with the glasses uh, second guy top two i i don't know huge He's top whatever. three yeah top three, definitely e- easily and uh you know, this guy is as accessible as accessible can be. I had a buddy who went to Con Bravo who, who, who was just, like, complimenting the heck out of Lewis. Doesn't know him personally, but just saw him interacting with people, interacting with fans and stuff. And the guy's a class act. Like, I know there are people that have problems with him and stuff, but the fact of the matter is, it's like, you know, uh, and, and Lewis and I have had disagreements about certain things in the past, but it's always been communicated and, like, you know, civilly disputed. settled yeah yeah you know um we've talked problems out and not not held weird grudges and, and started rumors and, and everything else but anyways happier subjects yes happier subjects happier subjects let's go to what my... projects do you got going on my projects that i've got going on um well i'm moving away from the microphone now i'm moving back um <laughs> currently um as of Late. My current project that I just finished was a episode number one, and I think I can announce this now is because it's been sort of going back and forth between online a lot. Is um, I, me and my fellow reviewer friend Rosenhacker produced a uh, show called Deviant Trash, where we go and find the uh what we would call the worst of the worst of deviant uh deviant art and we we do sort of kind of like a color commentary on the image itself and just sort of poke fun and snark at it and we're doing this as a way is not to make fun of the artist but just the art itself so you know we have things like bloated gary oaks shrek (laughs) uh shrek uh shadow slash pictures i really don't understand that can i just talk about that for a second i currently have a folder on my computer that is filled to the brim with shrek and shadow making out pictures Uh, 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 why I I don't know. I'm so confused. Oh, oh, oh. You, you only need to have color commentary in one image. 
but instead you have a folder to the brick. Are, are you admitting something in this podcast? No, I am not admitting anything into this podcast. I can fully put the blame on Rosenhacker, who continues to dig this shit up and throw it at oh. me. Oh, so, so he throws it at you and it sticks. You're like, I, this is wrong, but I like it. Oh, oh, is that what it is? <laughs> Keep rolling in your plastic wow. doll, sir. Wow, wow, wow. Rosenhacker is... Uh... Wow. What, is he my sugar daddy? Is that what you're trying to imply? I, 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 I don't know. Like, you, what, you, where, where are you trying to insinuate, what, what else? What else is Rosenhagger sharing with you? Um, there, oh, a lot of other things. Yeah, well, you'll just have to see in the first episode. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna tune in at this rate. <laughs> no, well, no, nah, I, I, we don't have any Shrek. Uh, uh, we don't go and we don't go too blue on the in the uh, the the episodes, but um. Currently, it it was initially just going to be a Rosenhacker and me project, but like I said, I kind of went on a three three to five month hiatus, and uh, I kind of uh, was I I kind of left the state up of what my creativity my creative projects are going to be sort of off the rails. So currently, Deviant Tra Deviant Trash number one is me and Rose, and then there's a second Deviant Trash episode that's going to be coming out later, and that's with Rosen and Zenith. And then uh, we're gonna see what the project takes us from there. Uh, another project that I'm, mm -hmm. another project that I'm doing. Uh, I'm currently shooting more insert. I'm shooting the giant fight scene, which I mentioned for um, Zenith's film right. it, it, with Hazard. Um, actually, and I'll make this announcement public. This is gonna be probably the last time you see Hazard for a while. This fight scene. Nice. It's gonna be this is gonna be sort of my hurrah hurrah moment for that character right now. Until things die down in life situations, this is gonna be the last mo this is gonna be the last time the character actually is the character hazard. Until later down the line when I can get back to being uh creating episodic content with Hazard. Will right. it be Hazard Rants? Not really sure. But it I do wanna come back to that character at some point. And then nice. the final project, or I have a bunch of other projects. I, I have like shorts I want to shoot, and I um currently in the process pre-production for two things, and the pre-production for a um a monthly show called Pat's Obsession of the Month, where I get to highlight a certain certain topic of anything, and I get to give a sort of general overview of this topic for people and show how I got connected with this topic, how people can, can get connected to this topic and the, and uh, like what other uh, related top, uh, what other related things come with this topic. So it can either be web comics that I've uh, been reading for a long time, uh, YouTube artists that I really feel a lot of people should be watching, um, music artists that are uh, currently still very underground, uh, you know, just generally pointing out things that I find and obsess over for, you know, whatever month I have. Right. Because, you know, I, 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 I do that. I tend to get wrapped up in certain things. And I do it for about a month's time, and then I sort of teeter out. But I never, ever really leave it. I inform myself about the subject, and then I hold on to that information. And then it just stays with me. And I feel like I want to sort of show that subject to other people. Right so, on. so, like, one of the episodes is going to be about... um. Uh, uh, a comic uh, that I read that's been going on since, I think, 1998, 97. It's a webcomic. It's called Sabrina Online. It's a very good, it's a very, very good slice of life comic. But warning to anybody who's going to watch this, we're going into furry territory. If anybody has an issue with that, I don't know. Furry territory. Hmm. It's a slice of life comic, but it, the instead of it being humans, it's skunks, <laughs> anthropomorphized skunks, so and you other go animals. From Trek making out the furries. Hmm. Hey, buddy, listen. I go into all these weird things. The internet is a huge and weird landscape, and you just happen to land into several different valleys. <laughs> 
And, and uh, then the other short that I'm currently developing is a offshoot of my Conversation with Myself series, which is a series that I had been producing on YouTube, and then I recently uh, or then uploaded it to Blip. And this is my Conversations with Myself series tend to be sort of an update video in a scripted or uh, improvised format. And this particular conversations with myself is going to be actually a different style in which it's a convers. A, I call it. It's a discussion. The title is called. It's a discussion with fate. So instead of me conversing with myself, it's going to be me conversing with fate and talking about uh, what fate has dealt me so far. What f- what I feel fate is going to de- deal with me in the future and dealing with the sort of uh, internal dialogues that I have on a daily basis and fleshing it out into something where I can communicate with my internal battles with fate itself. Nice. And that's kind of what I'm working on. Nice. So yeah. you got a full plate. I got a full plate while I'm also working my dead end job. Um, hey, you're making money. I am making money. That's, that's that more true. than a lot of people can say. So, uh, do you have any projects that you're working on, dude? Um, monstrosities is uh, something obviously that I am fully focused on. I'm at a crossroads as to really what I want to do with it. As in, you know, do I want to see if I can try to gain. Uh, bigger viewership you know numbers really aren't important for me anymore when i was doing azh and i was investing a lot of my money in it yeah i I i wanted to get some kind of revenue in return with this you know getting what i can get is just awesome but i don't know if it's really worth the effort to like you know oh hey let's or if it's even of the quality to to get a bigger uh number because numbers are whatever it's not important um Ultra fan is uh is still there. It's it's on the back burner. I would really like to get more um information. Like I have all this information uh about Ultraman Towards the Future, which was that uh the first English production between uh, uh Australia and Japan uh right. doing an Ultraman series. But it's not that I, I don't have the whole story, it's just that I would like to, I guess, find other things that would you know, make it more colorful, you know, to, mm. to find, you know, to talk to people who had more, maybe more perspective about it. Cause really the only person I've interviewed is the guy who did the special effects. And then I found a whole bunch of articles and variety and stuff. And, uh, uh, that it's, it's cool, but it's still trying to figure out, okay, so how should I present it? You know, should it just be an extended monstrosities episode? Should I, whatever. I don't know. And um, this is ultra fan, right? This is ultra fan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I announced like two years ago. Um, and, and unfortunately this, you asking me this question is just telling you what I'm not working on because the other thing I, I I'm going to make publicly, uh, right now, and it hasn't been said anywhere else, uh, how I spent my doomsday with, uh, Justin and Lewis or what was going to be with Justin and Lewis. Um, I don't think it's going to happen and it's mm-hmm. going to, it's not happening for a whole variety of reasons. I mean, I don't know if it was pretty obvious that it wasn't going to happen considering that nothing's really moved on, but, the teaser um, images were great. Uh, you know, I am indebted to the people that did those because they outdid themselves. It was just uh, fantastic. It just it went from being about Linkara and Juario, and then it, it became like, okay, well, I don't want to set this in the same universe as what they've created. And we started, you know, going into other territory and trying to make them into different characters, and it just got overly complicated and with mm-hmm. stuff that has happened in, in the past 12 months, I'm just like, you know, and I haven't told either one of them. I haven't had direct contact with them, but it's just, it's something that I think is probably just best left not done, you know? Le- left on the shelf right now. Exactly. So um, it's in permanent, uh, permanent hiatus for right now. Uh, probably forever. I don't ever foresee myself ever returning to work with individuals in that capacity again to do something that would have to do with the quote unquote review reverse. Right, um, right. I don't see it happening. So monstrosities, 
pretty much prime focus right now. Just having fun, you know. Uh, got the Giver episode coming out, doing all the Godzilla reviews. I'm just here to kind of just have fun and, you know, see what uh, what opportunities can come of it, really. Like, if we can maybe get some interviews with uh, some of the local shops and stuff like that. So. Right. Question, by the way. Um, how did you get involved with, uh, I'm going to forget his name, Matt, Mike? Uh, Sam? Sam. The Godzilla room guy? Yeah. Or, <laughs> or, yeah. Sam. That's what you're talking about, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, that was a, a really interesting story. Um, last year, I was getting rid of just a ton of my stuff. I'm like, I'm going to go get rid of my storage unit. And I cleared out probably about 70% of it. Selling stuff on eBay, throwing it in the trash. So I had some extra spending cash. And naturally, if you have extra spending cash, you know, you don't put it away for a rainy day. You you automatically go out and buy toys. So I went on uh, this place and I bought a, a toy uh, a, of this character called Batra that's from Godzilla. And the guy was local. He, he lived up in uh, Peoria. I'm over here in uh, in Phoenix. And um, I was like, oh, hey, cool. That's that's an interesting. We just started talking back and forth. And eventually he's like, hey, I'm having this get-together with a bunch of guys. Um, it, it's just we're going to watch a couple of Godzilla movies. You want to come over? So I went over, and you know that's where uh, the other kid, Max, was. Max is in the Comic-Con episode of Monstrosities couple other guys and we just all really kind of bonded and uh what's cool about that bachelor toy i don't know if you remember from the godzilla room episode that was actually dave's toy uh dave was the guy who was um sam's best friend who unfortunately passed away and really just kind of kick-started his collection and this toy was just in prime condition and uh so yeah you know he just met through godzilla and toys and all that stuff and sam's a great cat like he's just so easy going his family's great and his collection is growing more and more. We were just there a couple of weeks ago, actually. He had another Godzilla get together, and he already has like, I think like, ninety percent of the original Japanese posters for every Godzilla film. Oh wow! There's only like maybe, maybe ten films. No, less than that. Less than a dozen um, that he needs to still get. Oh, and that's... you know, these range from the '60s, the '90s, the 2000s. I mean, it's all over. That's impressive, Brad. <laughs> you say that, you yawn. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got, oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my, you know, we're, as many people will not know, Matt and I are not actually in the same room. We are halfway across the coast from each oh, other. Oh, yeah, yeah, coast to coast, baby. Yeah, so I'm, I, I it's a currently a little bit later here than it is at Matt's place, so... <laughs> Well, we can wrap this up if you want. No, no, no. I, you know, in all honesty, I'd rather be talking and enjoying myself than just sitting quietly in my room. So, <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, in the, I mean, you know, that's a great way to wrap up the podcast, so I don't have to continue recording, recording, and eating away more of my memory. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, it just stating like. Let's just say, uh, just go ahead and pimp out some of your stuff so that uh, people know where to find you. Well, um, you know, I'm very active on the uh, social media. You guys can follow uh, me on Twitter at Apollo Z Hack, uh, all one word. Um, mostly just updates about monstrosities. Uh, monstrosities can be found over on YouTube, uh, uh, the Hazard Channel, and uh, GeekVision.tv. Um, pretty uh it, it's updated fairly regularly um we also have a tumblr page monstrosities 1138.tumblr.com that's uh that needs some updating but it's there and it has some pretty good stuff so uh yeah you know i mean that's pretty much where you're gonna see the feed of things and uh like so we got some cool stuff in the pipeline I'm, I'm looking forward to it i'm just like i'm just enjoying myself like it's just so nice to not have to be like oh man i gotta gotta make sure i can gotta schedule these people and that people it's just like yeah today we're gonna go talk about this gamma toy and sit in the garage and all this crap and whatever yeah you know, it's yeah, great yeah that i mean you know that's the that's the place to that's the i i guess that's what it you know that's life. 
<laughs> By the way, I, I just want to let people know about this because there have been rumors going about. Uh, mm-hmm. So this will be official rumor dispeller. Uh, my life does not revolve around Tokusatsu, even though that's what I make a show about. Just saying, there's a little bit more, but yeah. yes, his 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 life revolves around other things like kaiju and other things such as uh, eating well, and sleeping. That that too, that too, and some of us, you know, their lives are all around, you know, Shrek making out with shadows and and uh, I'm gonna furries eat and your stuff. face. I'm just gonna eat it. You know, after 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 talking about Shrek and furries, and then you're saying you're gonna eat my face. You know, I'm even more terrified and mortified and horrified. What did you adopt? What did you <laughs> adopt, Matt? There's, there's a there's a horror movie right there in itself. I know, right? <laughs> Fuck the orphan. <laughs> Try the but yeah, man. Th- thanks a lot for having me on here. It's been a lot of fun. No problem. So, uh, thank you once again, to everybody who's listening to this podcast. Uh, you can all catch it at thehazardchannel.com. You can also catch it out on uh, YouTube at uh, Choking Hazard Twelve at YouTube. And as always, I am Patrick Hazard Simpson, uh, wishing everyone a good night. This is Hazard signing out.